This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create your beautiful website and build your brand. Hi guys, it's me Jess here and welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is the most awaited video in my perfect wedding series. It's my wedding dress! I never thought of making my own wedding dress before, but after getting into sewing and going on this journey is give me the encouragement to do it and I think a lot of you who love sewing might have this idea in mind that's why I want to try to share with you as many details as I can so you can have some basic information and reference before making your own wedding dress from my experience here are nine steps that I went through when making my own wedding dress the first step is finding your bridal style don't look at any wedding dress photo before you know your bridal style because looking at too many different wedding dress photos will make you feel overloaded and don't know where to start. Here are a few basic styles that most brides will have. Your bridal style can be one of them or can be a mix between two or three of them. However, if it's a mix, it still needs to have one main style in there. Your bridal style is usually related to your personal style and your wedding vibe. To help you know which one is your bridal style, ask yourself some question below. What is your personal style? Think about the style of the outfit you wear every day, the color of the accessory you use to you, or the style of your home decor. They are your personal style. Try to stay with yourself and think about what you love the most. What is your wedding theme or vibe? Think about the timing of your wedding. Is it spring, summer, fall or winter? Where your wedding will be held, the theme or the style of the wedding that you want to have. Knowing your bridal style will help you know the vibe you want to have in your wedding dress. It also helps you a lot when picking the fabric for your wedding dress later. When I imagine my perfect wedding, it will be the outdoor garden theme on a fresh summer day. And I want myself to look a bit lightening but not too flattering, a bit elegant but not too formal, and a bit sexy but not too revealing. So the bridal style I picked for myself is more than traditional. It's a combination of the classic and romantic styles. The next step is getting the inspiration for your wedding dress. This step will give you the idea of what kinds of wedding dress that are suitable for your bridal style. I usually go to Pinterest to get my inspiration, but you also can check it out on Instagram too. On Pinterest, you can put some different keywords to search for the wedding dress there. The keyword you put should be related to the bridal style that you pick in the first step. My tip for this step is before pinning any photo, imagine yourself in that thread to see if you would like to wear it or not because a lot of wedding dresses look amazing they look stunning on the model but you couldn't see yourself in them it will reduce the number of wedding dresses in your inspiration folder and it will help the next step become easier the third step is analyzing your body firstly it's better to know the variety of the wedding dress usually there are five shapes of the wedding dress about the body type, there are around five types of the woman body. You can Google to see the suggested wedding dress for the different body type. I figured out that I have a rectangle body type, so I can go with a shared A-line and an m by wedding dress. After finishing this step, go back to your wedding dress inspiration folder and filter on the dress that suits for your body type. And you can see the number of wedding dress in that folder is reducing a bit now. After the third step, you are now having a few wedding dresses to pick for your final design. So here are the way I did that helped me choose the final design for my wedding dress. The first way is trying on the actual wedding dresses that suit your body type. Because I have a pre-wedding photo shoot before, so I got a chance to try on different types of wedding dress. And it's helped me a lot in getting the final design for my own wedding dress. Even thought I look good, not too bad on the sheet and empire dress, but I just felt they are not really suitable for the vibe that I want to have for my wedding. And I really like the A lifestyle when trying it out. So my final choice for the wedding dress shape I will have for my own wedding dress is A line. The second way is comparing the difficulty or the complexity of each dread with your sewing skill. I didn't mean to put you down here or tell you to say no with your dream wedding dress. 
but some stunning wedding dresses you like might not be easy to make or they require a super high level of sewing skill or the material to make them is not cheap or easy to find in the market and you don't want to spend a lot of time on making the wedding dress that won't turn out to the way you expected, right? So from my experience, knowing your sewing level but still can add a bit of the challenge on yourself will lead you to the success in making your dream wedding dress. To get your final design, you can use the design from your wedding dress inspiration photo or you can bay on it to customize your own design. But if you choose that way, it's better to know some basic info before doing it. Usually, the wedding dress has two parts, the bodice and the skirt part. For the bodice part, here are some basic shape for the neck, the sleeve and the back. Think about the strain and the weakness of your body to choose the right one. For the skirt part, beside the wedding shape you picked before, think about the length of the train that you want for your wedding dress. Here are six choice of train lengths for your reference. After checking all of them, here are my final choice. For the by the pass, I choose square neck design with bare U-shaped open back and a V-shaped cut out at two sides. For the skirt, I chose a line shape with a cathedral train. After that, I tried to sketch my final design to have the overall look. Before moving to the next step, let's take a break to talk about our sponsor today. This video is kindly sponsored by Squarespace, the owning one platform to create your beautiful website and build your brand. I got to know Squarespace when I was looking for a platform to create my wedding website. And I have to say that I was very impressed by how easy it is. I created and launched my wedding website just in a day. So if you're looking for a platform to easily and quickly create your wedding website or any other site, I highly recommend you to check out Squarespace. Squarespace has templates for nearly any field you want. You can easily find the wedding website templates there. They have a lot of different templates for the different styles. You can go for a quick review or check out the demo site before picking the template you want to work with. From my experience, you just need to look at the style of the template to see if it matches your style or not. Don't worry about if it's not in the right color or it's have any mixing section that you want to have for your website because you can change the color or add a new section easily. This is one of my favorite features on Squarespace as you can customize your website to pick your styles. I'm a perfectionist so when it's come to create my own website, I always want it to be perfect. And the flexibility, the variety in customizing the website on Squarespace is really satisfy my perfected design. I can easily change the font, the color, and the style of any text on my website. I also can move or switch the position of any section. I can even add a complete new section. Squarespace also have a pre-designed layout for any specific purpose. So you can quickly create a professional look for your website without any skill. If you want to connect your website with a domain to make it look professional, Squarespace has a seamless domain registration. You can easily find a perfect name for your domain with a URL and in .com, .net, .org or even more specific. So if you want to create your beautiful webling website or any other site, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. You can check it out yourself first to see how easy it is. And when you're ready to launch your website, head to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace again for helping me create my beautiful webling website and supporting my channel. Back to our process. The next step is choosing the fabrics. With the design I chose for my wedding dress, I can go with a blank white fabric or add a layer for it. And if I go with a blank white fabric, the dress will look elegant and traditional, but it also will look a bit formal and I don't really want to have that feeling for my wedding. Besides that, my wedding theme is floral garden, so I was thinking of adding a layer of floral lay fabric for my wedding dress. This will make my wedding dress look less formal and more suitable with my wedding theme. After visiting on the fabric markets in my city and also checking online, here are my final fabric choice that I picked for my wedding dress. The main fabric will be the white tapta in the floral lake fabric. The side cut out will go with new seal tooth. And the lining will be seal cotton fabric.
Now let's start making the pattern for this thread. I start making the bided pattern first. I draw a straight line cutting a horizontal line first. From the straight line, I draw another one at 2.8 cm next to it and outside the horizontal line. 2.8 cm is 1 by 10 my inside shoulder side. From the cutting point between the second straight line and the horizontal line, I mark up 14 cm, which is a half of my inside shoulder side. Then draw a perpendicular line from that mark to cut the first straight line. From the cutting point between them, I draw a line to connect to the cutting point between the second straight line and the horizontal line. It will be the shoulder line of the battered. From the second straight line, I keep drawing another one at 22.5 cm next to it. It's a quarter of my bust side plus 2 cm. It's also the bust line of the baddest. From the cutting point between this new straight line and the horizontal line, I mark up 19.5 cm, which is a quarter of my bust side minus 1 cm. After that, I continue the perpendicular line at the end of the shoulder line to cut the bust line. Then I mark at 1 by 3 the width of this line. I connect this mark to the one I made on the bust line before. I mark in the middle of this new line after that, then connect this mark to the cutting point between the perpendicular line and the burst line. I keep marking the middle of this line again, then drawing a curved line from the end of the burst line to this mark to the mask on the perpendicular line and end at the end of the shoulder line. This will be the sleeve line of the baddest. From the second straight line, I draw another one at 41 cm, which is the length from the shoulder to 2 cm above my belly button. It's also the length of the baddest that I want. And this line will be the waistline of the baddest. From the cutting point between this line and the horizontal line, I mark up 16 cm, which is a quarter of my waist side. Then connect it to the end of the sleeve line to create a side line of the pattern. From the end of the shoulder line, I mark to the inside 4cm which is the width of the shoulder strap that I want. Then drawing a perpendicular line from this mark down to the end of the baddest. From the waistline, I draw another line at 6cm next to it. Then connect the perpendicular line I just drew before to this line by a U-shaped line. From the end of the side line, I draw a line to connect to the sleeve line to create a cut-out line for the pattern. And here are two pieces of the back pattern after cutting. The cut-out piece and the back bodice piece. To make the front bodice pattern, I make it based on the back bodice pattern I made before. I low down the shoulder of the back bodice pattern to cm to create a new shoulder line for the front bodice. After that, I redraw the sleeve line a bit at the end too. From the mask on the sleeve line, I draw a straight line to the middle line of the pattern. It's the position of the top of your breast. I count it's the top bust line. I measure the width between this line and the burst line to draw another line at the other side of it. And that line will be the under burst line. So the width between the top burst line and the under burst line will be 14 cm and it's also the width of my breadth. I create a U-shaped curved line between the top burst lines and the shoulder strap line to create a square neck line for the front batters. At the waist line, I mark in the middle foot, then I draw a horizontal line. That is parallel with the first one. Based on it, I draw a curved line from the U-shape of the neck to the burst line and slightly going down to this horizontal line to create a middle burst line for the front bodice. I use the cut out piece from the back bodice to copy to the front bodice. Then connect it to the sleeve line of the front bodice later.
and here are three pieces of the front binders of the cutting. The cut out piece, the side piece, and the center piece. I copy the center piece to the paper first, then I use the side piece to copy the middle burst line from it to the center piece. And here is the final centerpiece pattern. This is on the pattern pieces of the badass. I connect two cutout pieces together to have one cutout pattern only. And here are the patterns of the bodice after on, the back bodice pattern, the cutout pattern, the side front bodice pattern, and the center front bodice pattern. Add in one centimeter for seam allowance after that. Moving to the skirt pattern, here is the overlook of the skirt pieces that I will make. It's the full circle skirt with the train. I will need one front skirt piece and two back skirt pieces. Here's the way I do my measurements and also how I apply the patterns to the fabric for cutting later. And I finished making the patterns for my dream wedding dress. I try to share as much information as I can to help you have the overall look on how to make your own wedding dress. So I hope you will like it and get some useful reference. See you in the next video for the last few steps of making my dream wedding dress.